Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And we're going to be taking this eight year old i3 3D printer and upcycling it to print from this. To this. So let's get started. For some of you OGs out there, uh, this printer is what started this channel. So if you go back to even the first five or six videos on this channel, it was all 3D printer related. That's actually what I started this channel with. Since then, obviously, I've upgraded the 3D printer to either Neptune 2 or Ender 5 and other printers along the way. So I kind of just put this in storage and haven't used it. Up until 2019 or 2020 when COVID started, I brought this printer out from storage just so it could help me print TPU, which is a flexible filament because it has a direct drive head. And those were the things I was actually printing for hospitals and stuff. So that was the last time it was ever used, four, maybe three years ago. And since then, it's been shelved again now with the recent video that i've done with the neptune 4 pro i went deep into the rabbit hole of trying to figure that out with the clipper firmware fluid front end moon rakers everything about it i was like how does that thing operate so quick and the more i got into it the more of a deep dive i did uh, the more I figured that I could do the same thing to my very old printer and that's exactly what we're doing today. I'll talk about the software in a bit but as far as the printer goes after taking it out from storage the first thing I did was just level the print bed and just set it away. Now the first print that came out of this was disgusting. I mean it just didn't work out very well. Whole section of filament was just like missing and didn't want to print. I don't, I don't know why but yeah I didn't tune anything. I just level the bed and see where it went from there. It is printing at 40 millimeters per second and it's loud. Hear this out. So the next thing I did was actually tune the printer, uh, tightened up all the belts, cleaned out the nozzle, make sure everything was in kind of a working order, then set it off again for a second print. And then it printed out much better than the first print, but still wasn't as what I wanted. I realized that there was a crack in one of the X axes. So I had to reprint this uh, part just to replace it because of this crack. I think it's what's causing the shift in layers in that certain Z height. So after replacing that, I reran the printer and it came out a lot better. Now, since I know the printer is now operational, uh, I decided to swap out the stepper drivers. So I went from the old uh, A4988s, which was the loud steppers that you hear in the video, to TMC2208, which I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. And since the 2208s are a direct replacement, I didn't have to do any fiddling or anything to get this to work. Now you can get newer drivers like 2209s or other ones where it has built in end stops, but I just wanted a direct replacement to my Rams board. Keep in mind the directions are flipped when you put in, so you do have to flip the cable so it would go back to your normal uh, left and right. But if you have the firmware, you could do it in firmware and flash it. But in my mind, I was gonna flash this anyway with another firmware, so I wasn't gonna go that route. So I just flipped the cables. Now here is what it sound like again before the steppers were replaced. And this is what it sounds like when it's replaced. So other than hearing the fan from the PSU, this thing became quiet. You can't hear anything going on. You don't have to replace all four. You could just replace two, which is the X and the Y because the Z is barely moving. So you won't hear it much or the print head because that's usually slow. So it, you don't hear it as much, but I ended up replacing all four and it only ran me about $20. Now, after knowing everything is working, this is where the fun part comes, the clipper firmware. As I explained earlier before, this is the firmware that actually makes everything happen. So what we have going on is that we have an Arduino board with RAMS 1.4. So the Arduino board is uh, the 18 mega 2650, which has, I think a 16 megahertz processor in there. Can't be too sure because I actually didn't really look that up, but you gotta keep in mind, it's not only does it have to read from the SD card, it's gotta take that data, convert it, take the G code, process that, then push it over to your stepper motors to print out. So the limitations is actually just from the Arduino board itself. Trying to go anywhere faster than 60 millimeters per second or even 80 millimeters per second, it is gonna struggle. That's why we have like plugins for Arc Welder to help minimize the turns and the point data that we have. You are still limited to slow speeds because the processor cannot handle 
the data, nor the SD card can transfer that fast to get the data. So there, there's multiple limitations to the firmware part where we can't reach high speeds. And this is where Clipper comes in. So Clipper essentially turns the Arduino board and the RAMS board to just a slave board. All it does is just listen to commands and does what it's told. Raspberry Pi is what processes everything from the G code itself to linear advancements to um, input shaping and all that other like cool plugins that you could do while you're printing. It gets all done through the Raspberry Pi 3 and it just sends the commands over to your RAMS board, thus allowing you to achieve high speed printing. So again, I've seen this setup go up to a thousand millimeters per second, 500 millimeters per second, uh, just like my Elegoo, it's using the same setup. So you can definitely achieve high speeds with this. Now, jumping to the desktop. All right, so it's finally time to flash the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm gonna be doing is following the instructions of this uh, GitHub, which allows you to install Clipper and Fluid through one whole process. So the first thing you need to do is actually image the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna choose the OS. And according to the website, I just need to use the light version, 32 bit. And I think that's about it. I don't know if this is old or not, but we're getting to the point where we should be just using 64 bit. No, am I wrong about that? Uh, I'm gonna test it with 32 bit and see how it goes anyway. So let me set the host name to this and I am gonna call this the i3. Uh, enable SSH, uh, change the username back to Pi, Raspberry. I'll switch that later on. Configure my wireless. Wireless LAN is US, uh, New York, America, etc., etc. That's perfect. And then choose my storage, which I have eight gigabyte storage card in here that actually has OctoPi on there because that's what this original Raspberry Pi was using. And then I'm just gonna write. It's not gonna be the fastest, but it will work. Took about 10 minutes to write on the SD card, which is slower than normal. But yeah, everything is done. So I could just pop this SD card off and plug it into my Raspberry Pi 3. And since I have all the Wi-Fi set up and everything, I could just look into my router to grab the IP address. Now this is no form of way of a tutorial on installing Clipper. I could probably do that later down in the road. But for now, I'm just gonna load this up run this software, which is Kalua, and get the Clipper software installed onto the RAMS board or the Arduino and the Fluid Web UI. Now, what's good about this versus running it off directly on uh, Marlin firmware is that anytime that I need to change a setting like stepper drivers or directions of the drivers or anything that I need to do, I don't have to recompile the software. I could just change the printer.config file here and it'll know the new stuff that I just added. So what I'm gonna be doing for the next hour or so is basically configuring the printer config, which I think they have a sample configuration already for RAMS 1.4. Get everything to work with this board and I'll show you the configurations when I'm done. So i3 is all set up. I just have to hit yes. And the password should be raspberry. And there we have it. All right, I am in the Raspberry Pi 3. And I should be able to do sudo apt update just to grab the latest repositories. So I'm just gonna grab the script. Uh, I do have to install git, do update, okay. And then I'm gonna grab this, git clone into that. So let me just grab that. Uh, there is an update, I'm gonna skip that for now. Probably not the best advice, but do as I say, not as I do, I guess. <laughs> git, actually let me grab this, git clone. So no git, sudo apt install git. Let's do that real quick. All right, now I could git clone that. Shouldn't be too long. And then I should be able to run uh, that script right there. I'm just following along what the instruction says. Okay, so we have a couple of things. Nothing's installed, Moonraker's not installed, main sale is not installed, clipper screen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nothing is installed anywhere. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. So what I wanna do now is actually one which is install. And this also has the ability to update everything. So down the road, if you need, if they have a new firmware update or a new software update, you can just hit update on this. Ask you for the password for once. Okay, so I get to choose. This is pretty cool. You need the, the, the firmware. So what I'm gonna be using is one because I wanna install Clipper and I am gonna use Python 3. Whoops, I'd already had one in there please select the number of Clipper instances to set up. So technically you could hook up multiple printers if you do multiple Clippers, I think. I've seen them where they got up to four instances and you could hook up to four different um, printers onto one Raspberry Pi, just images. I, I don't know if I, how to do that yet, but 
I'm assuming that this is it. So I'm gonna say one because I only have one instance of this. Technically I should do two because this will be sitting right next to my other printer. So that might be in the future. I might be able to set up both printers running off one Raspberry Pi. All right, so be sure you have a lot of time because that total took, I think 30 minutes or even more uh, just from installing all that stuff. I ended up having to add each sync to my uh, Raspberry Pi 3 because it was getting a little warm. Anyway, the next question they have is your current user is not in the group of TTY, which I do need to be in. So I'm going to hit yes for that. And that's it. I, it gets me into basically what I need again. So now the next thing I need to do is install Fluid. You can install Mainsail. Uh, it's up to you. Um, I heard good things about it as well, but I've been using Fluid. So I'm going to stick with Fluid for now. Very, very similar. No, I do need to install Moonraker first because Moonraker is what runs all that stuff. So the firmware I have to install is Moonraker number two. So they found Clipper, install Moonraker, yes. Again, I don't know how long this is gonna take, but if it's any indication that the first one took about half an hour, this might take just as well. So again, carve out a good amount of time to install Clipper and Fluid onto your Raspberry Pi and then flashing your uh, Arduino. We are back and Moonraker seems to be installed. That took like about seven or eight minutes. So now I think I could install the desktop. So I'm gonna install four and it checks for all the stuff that we get. Yeah, it should just work now. I still don't think it flashed the firmware yet to the Arduino board. So I'm gonna have to figure out that part because according to this instructions, it doesn't have anything other than saying install this. Maybe it was in the menu that I skipped. All right, installing Fluid was super quick. It was basically downloading something and updating some files. So the question here is, is it recommend to use special macros in order to fully function? If you're ready to use these macros, skip this step. Otherwise you should consider it. And the answer is yes. I guess yes. All right, now we are back to the main screen. So third party web interface, da, 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 I don't need that. Uh, pretty G code, nope. Telegram, nope. Obico for Clipper, I don't know what that is. Octo everywhere, I don't know what that is either. Webcam, etc., etc. I think I'm done. I'm gonna hit B. Unless I miss something, I, I could come back to it. But Fluid is installed, Moonraker is installed, Clipper repo is installed. Do I do four for advance? And here you go. This is where the firmware is. So Clipper API, rollback, main sale theme installer, system change host name. I'm gonna keep all that. But firmware, build only flash only build and flash. So I'm gonna do four. Okay, so in the options, enable low level configurations, processing model, which is the AT Mega 256. That's what I got. Okay, so that's selected, right? Uh, Q to quit and save. Let's see if it breaks anything. I'm looking at the screen right now. It has a front panel display. So if it flashes or turns off, then I know something happened, but it is compiling, which I, I know that I have to do this step. It compiles the Clipper firmware and then flashes it onto there. Okay, firmware built. Flash MCU, regular flashing method, update via SD card update. Nope, regular flashing method. I already have it plugged up. How is the controller controlling the board? Honestly, I think it's uh, USB. It does see it, USB Arduino. Select the MCU to flash. So it'd be one. So it's uh, dev serial UID, yes. Yes, continue. It's flashing. Seems like everything's working. This is the first time I'm ever running this software, but yeah, I think it did it. So I'm gonna go back and Q to quit. HTTP I T. There you go. Fluid is working. Printer is not ready. The Clipper host software is attempting to connect. Please retry in a few moments. I think at this point, I'm going to have to dig into it where I have to set up the printer configs where I don't have anything set. So I'm going to play around with that and see what happens then. So it actually took about four to five hours to configure this printer, but I got everything working. Uh, let me show you the what I have installed basically. So here you can see I actually have Clipper installed. Moonraker, Fluid, which is the front end, and then Crow's Nest for the webcam. So you can still install all this other stuff if you got a clipper screen or you got a screen connected to the Raspberry Pi, or if you want to use Telegram Bot, you could use that as well. So there's a other stuff that you could install onto this, especially the time-lapse plugins or other plugins that you want to use. Now, here is the front end. Don't worry about the currently throttled. It is because I'm using a really cheap power supply to power this for now, but it does get the point across. So this is the actual desktop. I did print some stuff with this and I'll show you guys in a second. But yeah, this is the actual front end of it. You could see the G code if you're gonna preview it. You could adjust your printer calibrations or move the headings to wherever you want. You can even add extra stuff to this which you normally don't have. Like if you want to add LEDs, you can have the Raspberry Pi trigger a GPIO pin to turn on an LED. So that's what's really cool about Clipper. Now here are my configurations. 
And if I go over to my printer config, which this took so long to figure out, but I gotta say, it's, it's chef kiss to the documentation. Like anytime that I needed something, there's view stepper documentation. I could click on that and it'll actually bring me to the location of what I need to know. And if I'm looking for more stuff, say like extrude the documentation, I could click on that. It'll bring me right to that documentation as well. So the documentation on this is spot on. It wasn't more of trying to figure out how to do things, but measuring everything that I had on the system. Like this uses a five millimeter spindle rod to move the Z axis up and down. There's no configuration for that. You got to calculate everything yourself. Same thing with the stepper motor for the extruder and the teeth count. All that stuff has to be calculated to figure out what you need for this configuration. Luckily, there is like a sample configuration that you could start off with and kind of go off from there, but you still have to do it yourself. A lot of manual labor. Uh, the easiest way is actually to take the old configurations that you had. Before I flashed that, I should have done that, where you could actually print out the E-steps and then you could convert the E-steps to the new formula, which they use per millimeter. But yeah, either way, I got everything down and I also got the LCD screen working. So everything is working. Now I do have the max acceleration to 3000 and velocity at 300. So I'm hoping eventually I will get this printer to print at least to 300. But for now, yeah, it, it goes pretty quick. I mean, I'm surprised. So here is a footage of me printing at 60. Now it didn't go successfully because there was just too much oils from my hands and all that stuff on the build plate, which made it not stick to the build plate enough. But the lines on this print came out really nice much better than the Marlin firmware that originally came with. Then definitely right after that, I jumped right into excitement and threw in the 150 millimeters per second. So take a look at this. And this printed out great. There is still some vibrations in there that I could get rid of and probably help, but overall it printed, it was successful. I didn't have a problem with it. That means I'm able to print at 150 millimeters per second with this eight year old printer. So yeah, there we have it. Now I will be doing a follow up video because I have a lot more things to do on this printer. Other than just spending $20 on the stepper motors, I also now ordered accelerometers, which you can do for something called input shapers. I'll take the vibrations from the X and the Y, it'll configure some numbers to it and know when the vibrations occur and it'll adjust the parameters and basically make your print look a lot better. So I'm gonna be doing that on this printer. I also wanna clean up all the wires. I'm gonna be 3D printing a wire management or cable management for this printer. I wanna print a housing for the ramps board and close that up so all the extra cables that I have, I could just hide in there. Uh, I also need a new location for the Raspberry Pi. I also need to uh, figure a way to plug this board in there, which is this 12 volt to five volt quick charger. Um, yeah, I gotta plug that in there to power the Raspberry Pi board. So yeah, there's still a lot of work to be done with this and I will be following up with the video, maybe adding more LEDs or I don't know. Anyway, that is it for me guys. I hope you guys took something from this and want to upcycle your own 3D printers to make it more modern, faster, and everything like I did in this video. It was a lot of fun. If you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments below or on Discord. Uh, again, I will leave all the links to all the parts that I used down in the description below from Thingiverse to Clipper and Fluid and all the other stuff, the stepper motor drivers and possibly the accelerometer. All that stuff will be linked down in the description below. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.